welcome. In today's video, I thought I would do a little artsy DIY for you guys. So I've been inspired by this art print that they have at Platform 9 and 3 quarters at King's Cross at the store there, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's essentially a reprint of the first Harry Potter book, so Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, but there are sections in the print itself that have cutouts or blank areas, and when you look at it from a distance, you can see Harry's glasses, and it's just, it's magical. I absolutely love that print. So it got me thinking to artwork that I used to do when I was in high school and younger, where you would use really small words to make up an image. So because of that, I thought to myself, you know what, I kind of want to do something like that related to the tales of Beetle the Bard, and particularly my favorite tale in here, the tale of the three brothers, and using that to create the Deathly Hallows symbol. So if you're interested in making this particular art print, then stay tuned to this video. To make this art print you're gonna need a couple of things so first of all you're gonna need a piece of paper so the paper that I used for this particular print is just a regular piece of watercolor paper you could technically use regular printer paper you could really use whatever you want I used the watercolor paper because it has a bit of texture to it so I like it that when you get really close in order to be able to read the text on here you can actually see the texture of the paper but again, whatever kinds of paper that you have available to you, then by all means, use that. You're also going to need a big frame or any kind of frame, really. And my recommendation is that you use something square. Now, I will mention that I messed up. So when I was making this, I measured my piece of paper to the measurements that it told me for this particular frame. This is an Ikea one. I'll leave it linked down below. But according to the paper, it said it was 8 by 8 so I measured my paper to exactly 8 by 8 and in doing so, I didn't realize that there's a little bit of the frame that goes onto the actual paper. So you can see that my edges of my image are kind of cut off there. But when you go do this, try not to make the same mistakes I did. Definitely measure how much of the actual piece of paper will be visible in the frame. But I recommend a square frame like this because when you're using something like a triangle then you're going to be able to center your piece a little bit better versus if you have something that's more of a rectangular shape then obviously you're going to end up with more space either on the sides or at the top and bottom. But regardless it doesn't make a huge difference. This was just the aesthetic that I preferred but you can definitely use any frame you might have handy as well. Um, and in terms of the actual writing inside, I used a silver and gold pen. So primarily I used a silver pen. I did use some gold for some of the accents, but that again can just be any regular pens that you can purchase typically um, at arts and craft stores as well. I know that dollar stores sometimes carry these kinds of pens. The key with the pen though is just make sure it's very finely tipped. So very, very fine nib so that you can definitely get a lot of close detail and your lettering can be very, very small. So that's essentially what you're going to need in order to make this. But let's get into the close-ups where I show you exactly the process I went through to create this art piece. All right, so I flipped the camera around so that you can see a little bit closer what I'm going to be doing to create this art print. So first I had cut my piece of paper, so the watercolor paper that I was using into my eight by eight, so eight inch by eight inch size. And now I'm also just cutting some spare uh, random paper that I have so that I can create a bit of a circle. This is just so that I can create a, a more accurate actual circle versus just eyeballing it. But if you wanted to, you could just eyeball your, your circle. So that's gonna be our stone from the, um, the different Deathly Hallows symbols. I'm also going to be marking out the outer corners of the page. So this is just to create for myself a distance from the edges that's going to be even. And so that also I can determine the center point of my page, so about the four inch mark, where I'm going to have the top of my triangle. 
And then I'm using this protractor in order to determine the right angle that I want so that I kind of have even uh, angles on both sides. So my triangle is even when you look at it from a distance. I went with 60 degrees or 120 degrees. So you can just eyeball it as well if you wanted to, but the risk with that is that your triangle won't really be even from all sides. I then also created my center line going all the way through. And this part is really just penciling in your edges of where you're going to be having your triangle, your circle, and your line down the middle. So obviously the stone, the wand, and the cloak. You want to also create almost an outline, which I'll show you in a second, so that you're, you have um, an area that you're gonna fill in with your words is what you're trying to create here. It's gonna be a rough outline. You can definitely write just above it and within that area and then a little bit below it, which I'll show you towards the end as well, because the idea is that you don't want these lines to be visible in your final product of the actual artwork piece. And now you get your reference material. So this is the text you're going to be copying into your outline. I have chosen the Deathly Hallows as my symbol and the tale of the three brothers because this is a story that I absolutely love and I wanted to have as an art print on my wall. Here I'm just erasing any of my extra lines that I might have. I'm making sure that everything is nice and clear for me. But at the same time, I don't want my outlines and my pencil markings to be very bold. I want them to be light, just enough so that I can see what I'm doing. So here you can see the actual outline. So all those blank spaces in between are where we're going to be writing our text so that we can create our image and let's get to writing. <laughs> this is the part that does take the longest, but is actually the most fun because you're writing out a story that you absolutely love and creating an image out of it. So just take your time with it. It, it does take a little while depending on the story you choose. Um, be very careful just to write clearly and in very small letters and really use your outline as your guide so that you can write in very clear straight lines. So as you can see here, you're already creating your triangle. Let me know in the comment section if you're gonna give this art print a go and try it yourself. And if you do, make sure to post a picture to Instagram and tag me at alwaysraz. As you can see, when I'm writing, I'm also flipping the page around and around. And as well, I try to get my text as close as possible when I get into a second line, so that as I create the width of the actual triangle and then subsequently the circle and then the line, I'm really putting my words close together. So from afar, they don't look like separate lines altogether, but they just look like one solid section of the triangle. You can see it better here as I get further into the text that it just looks like a solid block of coloring essentially, but when you get up close, that's where you can see that they're different lines of the text. In order to read it, you're also going to need to probably tilt your head or flip the actual art print around and around, but that adds to the magic of the whole experience. You don't want to just be reading from top to bottom the entire text. You want to really make it something fun and magical as you discover what it actually says when you get up close. I had a lot of fun creating this art print because the more I wrote and got familiar once again with this incredible story, the clearer the image came to be. If you were one of the three brothers, I'm curious, which of the three items would you have asked death for? I feel like I would have probably been too scared and in that moment would have just keeled over. <laughs> he would have had me right there and then but I like to think that I would have been intelligent enough to also ask for the cloak. 
When I finished writing the whole story, I decided I wanted to personalize the art print a little bit more, so I added a section here with the flowers that you can see in the book, and a little bit of magical sparkle and some stars, just like you see on the image that they have of the three brothers crossing the bridge. And on the other side, I also wanted to have the skull with the three magical symbols, which is an image that you see on the very first page of this story in the copy of the Tales of Beetle the Bard that I have. You definitely can personalize it to your heart's content. I also added some footsteps at the very, very end because I absolutely love how the story ends with the third brother greeting death as an old friend and walking away with him gladly. This is the finished print. As you can see, because I used metallic pen, it really reflects nicely with the light, and I love this effect. But you could achieve something very similar with black ink. It just wouldn't be reflective, but would look just as nice from a distance. And close up, you can read the story yourself. I hope you enjoyed this little DIY and give this a go yourself. If you do, remember, tag me on Instagram with your picture. Hope you liked this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Love and Lumos always.